The WRC is returning back down under. The Australian bush has stunning scenery and distinctive wildlife, but it does take some taming. Coming up in WRC Rally World this week. After a weekend of infighting at Citroen, we speak to Sebastian Ogier about the intensifying rivalry with his world champion teammate. I want to prove that uh, I'm able to win as well, and uh, that's normal. Uh, in the stages, we, we want to fight, and there is some tension with that. Germany hosted rounds of the SWRC and WRC Academy. We bring you the brutal action from both championships. And we join Ford for an exclusive insight into what goes on at a pre-rally test. Rally Australia has been on the WRC calendar since 1989 and rapidly proved a hit with its popular Perth location and treacherous forest roads. Almost an ever present on the calendar after 17 years, 2006 would mark the final West Australian round. Two years ago, though, the rally was given a reboot in a new location on the East Coast. It's put the event closer to the population centres of Sydney and Brisbane, and the stunning countryside around host town Kingscliff would provide more challenging roads. And for 2011, it's all change again. Rally Australia has shifted further south to the town of Coffs Harbour. The roads of the Coffs Coast region have been used in rallies since the 1960s and have hosted a round of Australia's national championship for a number of years. Coffs Harbour is in the state of New South Wales, 440 kilometres north of Sydney, the largest city in Australia. The route will feature 26 special stages over a competitive distance of 369 kilometres, including a super special stage on the jetty precinct of the Coffs Harbour waterfront. The roads themselves are expected to be similar in nature to those experienced further north in 2009. The route travels through the forests and shire roads of the region on a loose gravel surface. The distinctive roads of both East and West Australia have always thrown up incident and controversy in equal measure. Road order tactics have become familiar in recent seasons. Rally Australia 2000 took them to another level. Carlos Sainz was excluded for stopping in a flying finish, while both Tommy Mackinnon and Richard Burns used more subtle tactics to avoid running first on the final day. Mackinnon won on the stages, only to be excluded for an illegal turbo, and in the win to Marcus Gronholm. In 2003, Gronholm crashed out from the lead. Carlos Sainz also went off. Sebastian Loeb took over the top spot, but was locked in a tight battle all weekend with Peter Solberg, the Norwegian eventually pulling away to win in wet conditions on the final day. <laughs> Two years later, there was another early retirement for Marcus Gronholm. A collision with a kangaroo ended Peter Solberg's run out front. While Colin McRae heartbreakingly retired from a podium finish when his Skoda team ran out of time to repair a broken gearbox. Surviving all that was Francois Duval, who came through to claim his only WRC win. In the final Perth-based Rally Australia in 2006, Marcus Gronholm crashed out early on, effectively handing the world title to the absent Loeb. Henning Solberg made a spectacular exit, while out front, Chris Atkinson led on day one until he went off as well, leaving Mikko Hirvonen to claim his first victory. And two years ago, Hirvonen would win again on the first Rally Australia to take place in New South Wales. Loeb thought he was the victor, but an illegal part on the Citroen C4 resulted in a one-minute time penalty, handing the win to his championship rival. As mentioned, the event is on the move again in 2011. We'll bring you details on the new look Rally Australia later in the show. At the start of 2011, Citroen had the dream team, a stunning new car in the DS3, and an all-French lineup: Sebastian's Loeb, 
and Ogier. The veteran seven-time world champion and the ambitious, talented new star. With both drivers given equal billing, a stunning run has seen Citroën claim all but one of the season's wins so far. But the growing rivalry between the two Frenchmen had been simmering away under the surface. In Germany, it finally erupted. He said what? I have no comment. The good thing is there is a justice in the sport. I think he's speaking a bit too much. Citroën demanded a 1-2 finish. Ogier felt aggrieved at the potential damage to his own championship hopes, but won the event anyway when Lowe punctured. The relationship between the two Sebastians was at breaking point. We are big rivals uh, when, when we are on the stages and when we are fighting for, for a victory, but it's normal. He wants to win because he is uh, the best driver from many years and he wants to continue with Cyril. And I'm a young driver, I want to prove that uh, I'm able to win as well and uh, that's normal. Uh, in the stages we, we want to fight and there is some tension with that. While the experience in Germany will have him rattled, for the most part, Ogier is relishing the extra pressure. When you are playing for, for a championship, uh, a world championship, I think it must be difficult like this. Uh, for me, the start of the season was quite good. We had a good speed uh, almost everywhere. We were in a fight for the victory all the time. Unfortunately, we have done some mistakes, so maybe now it's uh, a bit more harder to, to try to, to fight for the championship, but it's still possible, so it's, uh, it's good. A number of final day incidents when in strong positions have certainly cost Sebastian dearly. Yeah, it happened uh, on many times on the last day, but for me it's not a problem of uh, concentration or thing like this. Uh, in Argentina, for example, it's a small pace not mistake. Uh, I didn't have the information. Maybe a problem also of maturity for sure, because uh, I had a very comfortable lead and uh, it was enough to drive uh, in the middle of the road and without any risk. But sometimes it's difficult to find the good balance uh, because you, you want to stay concentrated and we all know that it's better to stay on a good rhythm to be concentrated. And in Mexico it was uh, during a very hard fight. Uh, it was a bit difficult situation in the team at this moment and uh, I really wanted to, to stay first on this rally and I try to, to give uh, my best, maybe more than my best at, at this moment and it was also a small mistake but uh, Bill consequence and sometimes it happened. Ogier's first tarmac victory may have been controversial but Germany was a landmark moment. He became the first man to beat Loeb on tarmac in seven years. When he arrived in World Championship he had already a big experience on tarmac because of the championship he has done uh, in the past in France on the tarmac uh, championship. So. He had much more experience than me on this surface, so that's maybe why he is very strong on this surface. Uh, for me, the case is different. I started very quickly in World Championship in my career and I had not so much experience on this surface. As uh, in World Championship, we are practicing all the time on gravel. I learned more on this surface. Sebastian already has five gravel wins to his name and he also has a good record on new rallies. The Coffs Coast event in Australia should be another strong event. I think it's quite good news for me. Uh, as we talked before, it's, uh, it's, the experience is very important in rally and when we, you start from zero with a new rally, it's the same condition for everybody. So for sure I prefer that. Yeah, I think it, it can be a nice event for me. Uh, gravel events, I like it. and. Uh, I hope this uh, kind of rally will be nice, very... but I had some information and I heard that uh, it seems to be a beautiful road, so it, it will be nice, I think. With the ink still drying on Loeb's new two-year contract with Citroën, the row in Germany has suddenly left Ogier's future in turmoil. For now, though, the equal opportunities at the French team stand. It was important for me to know that because uh, I had another opportunity before this season and uh, an opportunity to get also a very nice car, so for me uh, my goal is to, to become one day world champion and I have to have the chance in my hand as soon as possible, so it was important to, to negotiate that. And uh, I think actually I have everything in my hand, I can, I can do it, but uh, for sure when you are teammate with Seb it's always a tough job to, to get victory, but it's exciting.
Coming up after the break, OGA's teammate Loeb relives a rare mistake in Australia on our classic onboard section. I was just pushing and I break a little bit too late and went in a trip. And we bring you all the best action from the Super 2000 category after back-to-back -back wins with Juho Hanneman's rivals respond. Championship rolls back into Australia this weekend. With the two Sebastians out in front and unfamiliar roads for WRC regulars and new teams alike, could the trip to Oz turn the championship upside down? Welcome back. We're soon off to the unique surroundings of the Coffs Coast in New South Wales. It remains to be seen what the roads of the new events will throw up, but Australia has a reputation for incredibly tough stages. In our latest dip into the onboard archives, we've travelled back six years to Western Australia. We're riding with Sebastian Loeb, with the 2005 championship already secured. It's fair to say the Frenchman may have taken his eye off the ball. Yeah, I know it was without any pressure because I didn't care so much uh, about it. So maybe I, I had already won the championship or something like that. And so I was just pushing and I break a little bit too late. I went in a tree just in front of Guy Frecklin who was standing behind the other tree. It was certainly an uncharacteristic mistake for a driver renowned for his incredible powers of concentration. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, it happens to break a bit too late sometimes. Loeb will certainly hope to get his braking spot on in the New Look Rally Australia. More on the Coffs Coast event later in the programme. Back to the treacherous tarmac roads of Germany now, which hosted round six of the SWRC category for normally aspirated Super 2000 cars, the closest support championship to the sport's top level. Already this season, there have been four different winners, but the most consistent man all season and the victor for the last two rounds has been Juho Hannanen. The Finn arrived in Germany with a healthy lead of 18 points over second place Martin Prokop. With three tarmac rounds to come, the driver's sealed surface form could be the deciding factor. Nine drivers were competing in Germany. It was a crucial weekend ahead for Juho and his closest championship rivals. Happy with these results will be last two victories from Greece and Finland. So on the home soil it was very nice. But now still three rallies to go and now new story, tarmac rallies. I have to try to be faster than Juho. If not, then it's a big problem for me for the championship. So I have to push for maximum and don't make mistakes. So it's maybe the most difficult thing what uh, you must do. First time in Super 2000 and Darmac. Other guys have done a lot of events on Darmac. So <laughs> for sure, it's not the easiest piece for us. Some of the toughest roads on the WRC calendar awaited the SWRC crews in Germany. The first tarmac round of the season would feature 19 stages and 360 competitive kilometres in the countryside around host city Trier. To give us a more detailed insight into the German stages, we had a word with local expert and co-driver to Hermann Gassner Jr., Kathy Wüstenhagen. And on the first day we have uh, six stages. 